not releasing and giving white another opportunity <laughs> opportunity to continue their momentum even though it is messy so you could in a, diff in a different context in a different game you could say oh that is they've arrived at the same time play on but the better call could be the the blue penalty um if that makes sense so if you play on from this you've got six white who's never on side i think she plays the ball i'm not 100 percent. she may just interfere with the player who's trying to play the ball yeah i think blue just scoops it back and then you've got obstruction by blue <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things happening <laughs> yeah so there's a lot happening i wouldn't think that i can't remember i don't think white's offside if you call it as a simultaneous strip it's not uh, a rock it yeah you know what you're right you're right which means to me maybe i'm thinking she should have released because i'm making an offside line <laughs> in my head yeah well and and that was the thing is like i think you got a strong 50 50 here where you can sell it either way as long as you make kind of a verbal statement as the referee so you have this picture you can either yell stripped play on and everyone's like yeah or you can blow the tackler assist not releasing and be like no you have a tackle made you have to release um and and to jenny's point like both are good calls both are totally acceptable calls and that's where you can add that next level of like well contextually what would be better to have right now and as we said like 68 minutes the score is 50 to zero life west are on attack like is it the worst thing to give life west a penalty here if it's a 50 50 yeah there's also a lot of scrambling happening and it's probably just going to continue so structure is not a bad idea here Sometimes stuff just happens. Yeah, this is just a bizarre thing that happens that we both found kind of hilarious. I'm just muting it because the sound of the rain is really loud. Why the reset? Oh, the reset's not part of the story, but uh, the you can, yeah, you can just probably fast forward to the scrum issue, ball yeah. So blue wins it, and then everyone just falls over. Does the nine kick the ball back into the scrum? Oh. <laughs> anyway. It's not really surprising with the conditions, I guess, that that crumbled. Yeah. So we just, we just had a, a reset here and gave White the ball back. And said, you, you know what? Everyone just fell over. And it's nobody's fault. Fair enough. Yeah, I think I think key here is like sometimes a reset is actually the best option. Um, especially when we talk about scrums and this and this and that. Like when you when a team misses a hook and then the other team misses the chance to steal the hook, everyone's kind of already standing up and it's like Everyone's trying to do the right thing here, and it literally just falls over. And I laughed for a long time and then said that reset was an amazing option. So kudos to Jenny here for, for making really the best call in my mind. A good reset. Awesome. Anything else from y'all? That's thanks it. For, thanks for doing that game in the rain, Jenny. That was your superhero. <laughs> no problem. Thanks to Tim for... Providing me with rain gear and and hosting me as well. <laughs> you needed the rain gear. I am so glad I was not in that game. I That's it. Did you go to the game? Did you stand on the sideline? 
Um, at, right. at the end, when he, you know, his game was at, was... my game was at noon. His game was at three. He was nice and toasty and until the, <laughs> right before his game. Yeah, that kind of rain makes me grumpy. Yeah. All right, Tyler, congratulations on your debut. Thank you. For Thank you very much. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was it was nice to go out to Chicago where I I feel bad, but I also don't feel bad because I had great weather. It was 75, 80, and it was sunny, and it was lovely. So I'm so sorry, Tim and Jenny, but the weather was nice. Uh, I'm supposed to have bad weather this weekend, so I guess I'll get uh, a week of delay. You're just um, but the game itself was was actually a lot of fun. We didn't have a try until 20 minutes in, um, so it was nice and competitive. Uh, I don't think the scoreline reflects it well enough, but both teams had uh, strong scrum platforms to work off of. Um, uh, Lee and I kind of talked about a couple of free kicks at the scrums that probably didn't need to be called. There was one that probably was, but the other two could have just played through and kind of let it settle. Um, it was a little too quick, and we'll take a look at one of them. But um, other than that, I think the game was good. Advantage, not so great. I think it was a lot of reactionary stuff. Um, but overall, it was a lot of fun. It was a good first week out, and uh, I'm looking forward to to the game this weekend. Lee, anything from you? Just uh, congratulations, Tyler. You did. A, you had a really good game, and I'm just really proud of you. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, um, so we can probably start with, um, we could probably just start with the, the 10 meter, the inside the 22. So um, had two penalties for kicks, you know, the 10 meter law. Nobody's retreating. This one happens about 22 meters out. So uh, I was like, oh, maybe we can play advantage here. Let's see if we get anything. Uh, and Lee brought up a good point of the 10 meter law, Nobody's moving. Nobody really gets it. Maybe just a quick penalty here, 20 meters out, is going to get the point across a little better than burning that minute and a half of play that maybe something happens. And then you go back and be like, but that doesn't, what is this for? Yeah, at this point, it seems pretty stalled, huh? Right. So, you know, in the moment, I'm like, oh, 22 meters out. Like, maybe we can get a try here or something. And later in the game, we do, which is great. Uh, but right now, it's not great. And uh, I think this is two or three minutes into the first, into the second half. So quick penalty here. Give Green a good platform to work off of. Uh, makes just a lot more sense than losing about a minute here uh, with the advantage. And see why you tried it, though. What do we think? I think you're a hero if it pays off and you look very silly if it doesn't. So if that's a gamble you're willing to take, then go for it, my friend. I like it. Like my dad always says, if like wishes and butts were candies and nuts, oh, what a Merry Christmas we'd have, right? Like <laughs> you're just hoping hoping it works out but if but if we're talking about like elevating the game this is actually another good discussion point like maybe this is one of those moments where we can you know and it's but anyway very for us really very philosophical but a good example yeah i wonder how well 10 meter law is understood by the majority of the players out there yep and that was my point it's <laughs> probably not super high I don't think yeah, I it's, did it it's, at all it's when I played. Very hard to sell that. Like it's very hard to explain it in the moment. So it's better if you like bang it and you're like, you right where you're standing within ten of this. And they're like, Oh you're like, Okay. You didn't understand that, so No. So so that did happen for the second one, uh, when they scored the try. It was off of a scrum. Uh White cleared it. They were off sides. And the player that I called the penalty against or the advantage for was like, what was that for? Where was I? And I was like, scrum was here. You were in front of the kick. 
everybody there was off signs. You were just the closest to the kick. And they were like, oh, okay. I guess that makes sense. It's like, well, just, it's a penalty. Just trust me. Um, so this is one of the free kicks uh, at the scrum. Um, Lee brought it up and she's like, listen, you could probably just take a second, let it settle. Um, you, you didn't really have any issues for the most part. You maybe just give this a beat. Uh, and if it feels like a drive, then call it. But you, you probably can just play through this. Uh, in retrospect, do you agree with that? I do, yeah. So looking back, I think, you know, I already told Green, I was like, listen, you know, let's make sure we take the hit and we, and we settle. Um, and I mean, they were, they were good. They did a very good job of like making the hit. We shuffled a little bit uh, and then we were okay. I, looking at this one, I think I probably could have given this another second or two. And if it continued to move, then go with the free kick. I think I was quick here. And if I took a second, maybe it would have been okay. And it would just sat down. I also think and it may not have much bearing on this scrum, but the New York nine has a tendency to hold the ball and not put it in oh, yeah. necessarily mm -hmm. when it should. So it's probably something we all as referees need to have some awareness to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then just early in the game, um, panels here, Lee brought up a good point of saying, uh, you know, a lot of the instances if the advantages I gave were, were advantages coming, but then a player picks up the ball and just runs into three or four opposition players. So just go with the quick penalty, give them the platform rather than having a chance of something happening, you know, more contact, just get rid of it. This is easy to see um, and just call it right away and give them the time to use it. So White comes in from the side and it's it's kind of hard to see, but I mean, you can clearly see this breakdown. White comes in as the ball is coming out. It doesn't really affect the, the cleanse of the ball, but we're 10 minutes in, 11 minutes in. So I feel like this is like a standard setting call of if we're going to come and compete and try and, you know, contest the breakdown, let's do it legally. Um, and then Green comes around the corner and run in, runs into two or three players. There's another one back. They go five meters. The breakdown's not clear, so we just end up, you know, coming back anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. That's it? That's it. That's all I got. Wow. We were long last week and short this week. Um, I just had two that I wanted to bring up. We've had a couple of um, crawling instances, and probably when I went... I went back and looked at the two that I looked at and there was, I think maybe one that Bob had tagged as well. Um, one cat tagged. I can't remember which one I grabbed. I think this one was cats, but I had seen this as well. Um, so the question really is, is the ball carrier held or not held? And then do they change the gate on the ground? But then this one, I think she's not held, but then she's crawling. So I think we just need to have awareness to those things and be clear in our mind um that's not how we're calling them but she just squirms along the ground and makes it difficult for blue to play she probably wasn't held but she has to get to her feet then we had probably three to four of those across the matches of some sort, some variation of that. And then I just wanted to remind us that not all head contact is a penalty. So if the tackler is low and broken down in position to make the tackle, then even if there is head contact, it is play on. This is an example of that for me. Okay, I'll slow that down for you. But if you see her when she makes contact, there's not much else she can do. She's quite low. And 
you know, the ball carrier may even be falling a little bit before the contact. We all okay with that? Yep. Cool. All right. That's it for advantage. Let's see what else I had. What's going well? We are identifying the foul plays, but I didn't really see much that that we that we missed or let go. Um, there seems to be pretty good space at rucks. I'm not seeing a lot of pillars or offsides that that are just going without penalties. Um, scrum setup looks pretty good. And then for me, the work ons are going to be again in front of kicker, the extra roll and. We do need to keep our eye on squeeze balls. I haven't seen any that I thought absolutely needed a penalty, but I have seen a couple where I was like, mm, maybe that's probably if we start seeing squeeze ball from one or two teams a couple of times in a match, maybe that's where we just have a word with the captain to make sure, you know, if you're going to squeeze ball that the ball needs to be available. Uh, some of them are definitely right on the line. And then um, our advantage application and how we're using it. If you go back through um, the matches this weekend and just filter by advantage, there's some pretty good clips to watch and think about. So any comments about those things? Okay, shout outs. Thanks to everybody for having patience with me last week. I know that was difficult that I was stuck in an airport and I very much appreciate um, Olivia running the call. Amelia, who is on a plane this evening. Good luck tomorrow at MLR. We all support you. Kat, welcome home and congratulations on the Olympics assignment. Wendy, my favorite commentator at MLR. You're killing it, girl. Keep it up. Tim, Jenny gave you a shout out for cinnamon buns. Apparently we all missed some good stuff uh, in California. And then Tim also was announced that he's got an international match coming up and who is it, Tim? Came in verse Bermuda? Mexico. Mexico. Right, right, right. My bad. Cool. Congratulations to everybody. Coming up next week, Katie Roth, debut weekend. Am I right about that? I have to look at my notes. I think it's yep. Katie's debut. Yeah? Yes. All right. And then when Tyler goes again, this time he stays at home at New York, and Lindsay heads up to Chicago to do North Shore versus Life West. And that'll be round three. All right, I'm going to stop recording maybe, maybe. Okay.